Hello and good morning. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Louise. I'm a plant hobbyist and I live in Manchester in the UK. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to grow the hottest chilli in the world and also how it all started, you know, why links to Bangladesh as well. I'm going to incorporate that in the video. So if you think this would be interesting to watch, please stay. Uh, if you're new to my channel, uh, like and subscribe if you can, please and uh, we'll get to it. So it all started um, back in 1980. Um, I'd just arrived back from Bangladesh. I'd been there for, oh gosh, about nine months. And I had brought back with me a very small round chilli. Um, and I believe, I didn't know at the time, that this was a wild uh, variety, uh, a possibly a teepin variety of chilli and I managed to get that to germinate. I used garden soil and I popped it into a little margarine tub. I didn't have a propagator in those days, I just popped it on a shelf which was above um, the cooker in our kitchen and uh, the heat from the cooking enabled this little, uh, these little seeds to germinate. So I did end up having a few plants and I managed to get two to a flowering and fruiting stage and they uh, produce these little purple flowers and eventually little round fruit um, but unfortunately I went away again and when I came back the plants had died so I wasn't able to save seeds from them and I've never found that chilli since you know I've searched high and low for it um, nobody seems to grow it <laughs> it's just just one of those things so that sort of kick-started my interest in growing chilies um, because I was fascinated by the fact that I brought something from another country was able to plant it and watch it germinate and grow and fruit um, that really you know sort of got my interest going and from then onwards I've always tried to try you know uh, tropical fruit seeds and pop them in a pot and see if they grow and it's just like I just like the experimental side of it as well as watching the successes you also have the failures but yes yeah, so that's where it all started back in 1980 and since then I've grown a wide variety of chilies I'll see if I can get a picture of um, one of my harvests where I've got a multitude of uh, different varieties of chilies so um, I'm interested in growing all types. This year, however, um, I had planned to go away to Bangladesh in March, but unfortunately um, the pandemic happened, didn't it? And so I had to cancel those plans. And because I had planned to go away, I didn't start off my normal, excuse me, my normal chilli grow. I'll just have a sip of this. I didn't have, um, I hadn't started my chilli grow, which would normally have started back in December or January, um, because they do require a long growing season, especially super hot chilies. So I didn't um, do anything. And then when the pandemic happened, I realised, oh gosh, you know, not got anything planted. So I hurriedly just got lemon drops, uh, lemon drop chilies, nagas and uh, I had some uh, bird's eye uh, KN type chilies uh, seeds left so I planted those and unfortunately because it was so late in the season they've only just started to fruit and flower you know um, and really the, the naga harvest is is not great basically the ones that have fruited have got little stumpy um, misshapen uh, nagas on them so not really worth call, calling that a success at all so yeah the, the key is to plant early allow your plants to have a long growing season so my nagas are still in the plastic greenhouse I'm not going to bring them in because they've not fruited very well so I'll probably just start off again fresh I'll see if I can get some nice um, proper nagas what I call um, I'm not talking about butchilokias um, I'm looking for the 
small dark green um, variety which is a type that tends to grow in Bangladesh more uh, what I associate as a true naga and I have grown them in the past but I don't seem to be able to get hold of that particular one the book Jalokia seem to be everywhere the long uh, and they've got like a pale green skin I'm not really interested in growing that I would prefer to get hold of the small dark green naga which is a sort of triangular shape or heart shaped um, not very big but they are very very hot if anybody's got any out there and would like to send me a pod you know I don't mind doing a little chili seed swap or chili pod swap if you would want one of my lemon drop chilies or I've got some hot chilies here that I'm going to show you so bear that in mind if you are interested in um, helping me out there so that's where my first uh, interest started back in 1980 um, and now we jump 40 years ahead and um, here we are in 2020 and um, I'm this year going to be trying to grow the Carolina Reaper which is in the Guinness World Guinness uh, Book of Records um, for all sorts of things but there is a section for the hottest chilies and the Carolina Reaper which was a it is a hybrid chili bred by a chap called Ed Curry back in 2013 was the first time he entered it into the Guinness World Records and then again he submitted it in 2018 and it retained its title of being the hottest chili in the world um, they measure the heat of a chilli in uh, units, Scoville units and I'm not sure the science behind it but there is a, there is a method to measuring how hot a chilli is and just to give you an example, gosh I think it was about eight, nine years ago when the, um, the, the Naga, uh, the Dorset Naga which is a Naga chilli from Bangladesh which was bred by a couple who have their own chili farm in uh, Devon and they apparently bought this Naga chili from a grocer's, a Bangladeshi grocer's in Bournemouth and said that they bred it over several uh, years and came out with what they call the Dorset Naga and at that time it was in the Guinness World Records as being the hottest chili then and it measured in at around um, a million Scovilles I believe might not be 100% you know accurate that but um, that that was the level of heat that the Naga was producing then and now well go back two years when Carolina Reaper was uh, submitted it came in at two million Scovilles so that's incredibly hot um, if anybody's ever tried a Naga chili will know the extreme heat you know uh, it sets your mouth on fire basically it's a lasting heat well imagine a two million heat Scoville on a, a chili which I'm going to show you you may have seen my other videos if you're not new to my channel um, a previous chili, uh, ch chili seed grow that I was starting and I did plant some um, Carolina Reapers well these aren't produced from there, I bought these um, and these are Carolina Reaper pods I'll give you, I've cut one open so you can see there's lots of seeds there the reason I've bought these and I'm going to extract the seeds is that I have a friend in Bangladesh who owns a garden nursery and we've exchanged plants a couple of years ago and he'd asked if I'd got any um, Carolina Reaper seeds uh, and, and other chilli seeds so I managed to get fresh pods because um, I didn't have any uh, others so I'm going to be extracting the seeds from there oh it's very very strong um, so if you've ever had a Naga chilli it's very similar to that and a bit of scotch bonnet fragrance to it as well I'm not even going to try eating this <laughs> incredibly hot 
just smelling it it's like burning my nostrils so i've got a few pods here and hopefully i'll be able to extract quite a few seeds from these so guinness world record holders the hottest chili in the world the carolina reaper so the, the different shapes but mainly the shape should be with a little spike on the end there should be like a little tail on it um so here's one you see the tail there a little spike i don't know if you can see it properly there so carolina reaper pod so i've got a few there if anybody wants to do a swap on a true naga it has to be the dark green one and they want one of these then i can send them uh, you can do a swap i've planted some of those um, not from that batch um, i did plant some seeds back in september and i've got some here and some more here so i've got enough there um basically i took took they were all in this tray and with it being a bit shallow i put them in something a bit deeper um so i've got enough to fit in there and I'll probably i will pot those ones on individually um, in little pots or little plastic cups so um normally i wouldn't start that early but with me not being able to find uh, seeds you can't always get true chili seeds if you're buying off the internet you can see them on ebay and it'll say carolina reaper or naga or whatever and they're seeds and all the seeds look the same and until you've planted it and they've fruited you're not going to know if you've been <coughs> cheated out of uh, what you intended to grow so um, I like to get the full pod um, so if, if I'm doing chili swaps with other people who grow chilies um, I like to send them a pod you know the whole chili pod and they can see exactly what they're getting you know um, sending seeds in packets there's only a few people that uh, unless you know I actually know the person well and I've had seeds from them then yeah, I'll, I'll accept seeds. But if I'm buying off the internet, I'm very wary. So I'd like to get fresh pods or dried pods, you know, um, as long as I can recognize that it's that particular chili that I am after. So that's my advice. If you are buying off the internet, be aware that you don't always get what you pay for. You know, um, you can end up with say just a normal KN chili when you paid quite a bit of money for say Carolina Reapers so these are definitely the Carolina Reapers I got them from supermarket this will probably read backwards but it says Carolina Reaper and it was bred here uh, although the original was was um, made in uh, South South Carolina in the United States there's a grower here commercial grower who has bred them here and he sells them to the local supermarket. So I'm just going to have another sip of my tea. So what are the links um, to Bangladesh? You might be wondering. See, you might not be wondering. You might think I'm not interested at all and therefore you can scroll on by. Um, but if you are interested, how did it all start? Well, I did mention at the beginning, my first chilli grow was back in 1980. I just spent nine months in Bangladesh. Uh, so I went in 1979 and I spent a lovely time there in a village. And the village was um, my father's village. My father was from a village in Bangladesh. Um, it's in the Hobbygunj district which is part of the select region of uh, Bangladesh northeast northeast Bangladesh um, I'll see if I can get a picture of a map 
can show you where Bangladesh is if you're not aware of Bangladesh at all. Um, a little tiny country sandwiched between India and Burma. A tiny little country there. And my dad came from Bangladesh, from his village. Um, he was a, a merchant seaman and during the Second World War, um, his ship was captured and he spent a few years in a prisoner of war camp. After he got out of that, um, he continued to be a merchant seaman until um, I think it was 1958 that my dad came to um, London. And uh, that's where um, he arrived and he met my mum. Um, they got married and um, had my older sister. She was born in London and then they moved up to Manchester where I had um, my mum my and dad had a little uh, restaurant and the New Light of India back in, gosh, 1961, I think it was, or 19, yeah, 1960 or 61 to 1964 um, so I was born above the restaurant as, as well as my brother and um, forgot to mention my mum was from Ireland she uh, was from County Sligo which is in the west west part of uh, southern Ireland and um, so I have dual heritage mixed heritage if you like um, I did grow up with my um, half siblings. My my father's first marriage was to a Bangladeshi woman, and he brought over his um, older children, and they lived with us. We lived with them, and um, I sort of have a dual culture as well. So I have my English culture, and I have my Bengali culture. So I can speak um, Bengali. Speak Sileti dialect, and I can speak um, what they call Dakaya, which is the language that they speak in the capital of Bangladesh, Dhaka. And the reason for that is that my husband is from Dhaka. Um, his his parents originally, well, his father originally came from a, a part of Bangladesh called Fodipur. So um, yeah, so I have quite a big in-laws family and uh, have quite a big family on my uh, dad's side i've only just found out um about my mum's side of the family county sligo um so i have some irish relatives as well and i do plan to go back to county sligo and visit um the area that they're from um, although there's no living relatives both my parents passed away um, back in the 80s so um, I don't have any uh, but I have one living aunt on my uh, mother's side but um, I have lots of sort of in-laws and um, lots of relatives on my dad's side you know um, half siblings and their families as well so yeah I have I leave a very multicultural life <laughs> So that's a little bit about what my links were to Bangladesh and I do continue to visit Bangladesh. I haven't been though for a few years. Um, I've been going since 1979. I think I've made about eight, nine trips to Bangladesh and um, the last time was in 2011. And I was supposed to go, as I say, this year. And um, obviously that's, everyone, I think everyone's plans were cancelled this year. Um, maybe next year who knows with this pandemic what will happen and I plan to um, have a look at the interesting plants over in Bangladesh there you know all the different types of fruiting tropical plants bananas champa um, sikimensis um, all those different varieties of banana that they have I'll be interested to see um, what seeds I can get while I'm over there so yeah, it's all a bit pie in the sky though, so who knows what's going to happen next year. I'm not even going to try and plan ahead for that, you know, you just have to wait and see. So um, if there's anything you'd like to ask me regarding today's video, um, please um, 
put something in the comments below and please like and subscribe um it does help you know if i can see people um like my videos it encourages me to make more um if you've got any suggestions of what else you would like to see me um put out here um please put in the suggestions in the comments box below so thank you for watching please like and subscribe and share this with your friends and I hope to see you soon. Take care everyone. Bye bye.